I grew up the youngest of seven kids. I got three brothers, three sisters, and I started working at the age of 11. We actually had a concrete business. And of course, being a kid, you marvel over like superheroes and you want to look like you know, Superman or whatever. So I was always intrigued by the muscle. And I actually didn't start training until I was 18 years old. But in high school, I played football. I was just really limited what I could do for sports. The track team wanted me really bad, but I couldn't participate in a lot of the weekend events because I was working after school, weekends, and school vacations in the concrete business. And that taught me a lot of dedication. I, I give a lot of credit to what that did for me. And I was the kid that if I saw any leg equipment in there, I would do every leg machine, every chest machine, every shoulder machine. So I kind of overtrained, but at the same time, my body still responded because for the first time in my life, I wasn't doing the labor work. I was actually going to college and I was eating. I learned about nutrition. I read about a lot of stuff about it. In high school, I used to bring me the competitions. We'd have our football team would do these powerlifting competitions and I would kill everybody in all the lifts, you know, squat, deadlift. I mean, I benched 315 in high school. I didn't even know how to lift weights. So I had a lot of strength too. So I have to work in the concrete. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna dedicate myself to the gym. I joined the gym my 18th birthday. It was 1991, August 3rd. I saved up $300 and I put a membership down at Gold's Gym in Worcester, Massachusetts. And that's when I started my quest in bodybuilding. Actually, I linked up with a nutritionist probably six months after training uh, named Chris Aceto, who's a big dietitian for a lot of the top guys. That's where I really started responding and I made improvements so quick. The first time I got on stage, I was that I was hooked and I placed second at my first show. Became a teenage national bodybuilding champion at 19. The story of Jay Cutler started. At 19, I was a 700 pound squatter. I bench pressed 500 pounds. I was squatting until my nose bled. That, if you didn't squat till your nose bled, then you were doing it wrong. But that's the kind of mentality, that's the kind of place I trained at. Like the guys were hardcore. We wrapped our knees, we got that weight up there. And my legs were my easiest body part to build. I was known for my legs. When, when people started talking about this up and coming teenager kid, in Massachusetts, they talked about, you know, the kid with the crazy legs, because I'd had, like, the best legs in the gym, even after a year of training. It was just one of those body parts that just, it was a sweep, you know. I realized after time that, hey, I didn't need to go that heavy, but I loved to go in there and just killing it, and having the strength. But I realized the one rep stuff isn't gonna get me to the Olympia stage, and that's where I focused on the 10 to 12 repetitions. But along the way, I actually got better and better and better. Turned pro at 23, which is relatively young. I was 25, I did the United Champions, I finished 11th. And it was very disappointing for me because coming from a guy that won almost every show I ever did, especially I competed in three shows before I got my pro card, it wasn't very difficult to get that card. But then competing, it was a whole next level getting to the pros. I was kind of like, wow, you know, it's, it's a big eye opener for me. Every show I ever did, I, I tend to actually be more dedicated and more focused on the nutrition aspect and the consistent training that it allowed me to make improvements. And I think that's really what kind of built me towards the end. And then I was just competing once a year for the Mr. Olympia. After you win everything else, that's kind of what they do is we kind of move towards the one crown. 
qualified for the Mr. Olympia, which was obviously huge then. Went to Olympia and I got dusted. I got a second to last. I was 15 out of 16 and I was like, fuck, should I quit? I remember saying, am I just not good, you know? And Joe Weider actually, who brought Schwarzenegger, moved me out to California. Like, man, we're gonna go out to California. We're gonna crush it. You know, overcome whatever weaknesses I had. It inspires me to be able to train at 100% and see improvement consistently and just hopefully it'll be enough to win. I went to Olympia and I got eighth. So I moved up half the position from the year prior. Sat out the next year and I came back to the Olympia and that's the first time I got second to Ronnie Coleman. And that's the first time ever in my career I realized I could actually win the Mr. Olympia competition. Could have won that show and I placed second. And I said, holy shit, I'm gonna win this contest at some point. It was just crazy. It was the best Ronnie we ever seen. He was like, 280 pounds and ripped and no one was going to beat him that year. No matter how good in that year I was really on a roll. I had just won the Arnold and I was like the new up and coming future Mr. Olympia. So that continued 2004, same thing, going to Olympia, I thought I was going to win. And then 2005, same thing, second again to Ronnie Coleman and I said this is it. Like he's, you know, I got to put a package together that's going to beat this guy. So I said, you know what, 2006 I'm going to come back, I'm going to just be fuller and bigger and that's when I finally knocked him off. You can bring the Olympia gold medal, the Sandow statue, Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler! As a champion, you're always dealing with people on the up and coming, right? But I didn't give a shit. I was just like, you know, I'm coming for what's mine and I knew I had work to get there.